first I used to look at people and say, like, why are we wearing shades? Hey, man, would you like some food? I said, oh, wait, that's the sun stuff. All right, groceries, take home or anything? On my way back, I'll pick some up. I got to go to the library. Right on. Yeah, we'll be here at five. Here. We'll kind of slow, I, so. I usually grab some. We'll be here until about five. Okay, you make it. I'm 21. I've been a student at SUNY ESF for three years. I don't run an organization, but You're part of a I'm part of a consensus-based group that is called Food Not Bombs Syracuse. Uh, Food Not Bombs all over the world shares free, hot, nutritious vegetarian meals. Uh, with the communities that need them, they can assess uh, a community's need and what's being lacked, um, distribute free food in hot and cold forms. Uh, it's not that easy for people to get food. It's really hard for people to get food for free. I heard of Food Not Bombs probably when I was like 13, 14, going around like the Cambridge area. So I was like, oh cool, the idea of sharing vegan food and vegetarian food with anybody who wants it. Uh, politics against war and um, other forms of oppression just seemed right up my alley as a fledgling young social activist. Food Not Bombs started in the 1980s in Boston out of the anti-nuclear movement. It was started by a group of people that were sharing predominantly with uh, anti-war activities, anti-nuclear arms race and things like that. They found it astonishing the priorities that were put on military spending and saw in direct contrast where their communities were not being taken care of by the United States government. There's been at least four incarnations that I can tell to the best of my knowledge, um, each of which had somewhat different objectives but all operated under the same guidelines. We have a good range of different volunteers. We have some volunteers that come out from high schools in the area that have just heard about it. People that come out from the Syracuse Peace Council every once in a while. We get people that come from the college communities, both Syracuse and the Environmental Science and Forestry School. Well, there's a lot of reasons that I do it. I know that I have too much. And I know that if I don't use it, some of it's going to go to waste. And that really upsets me because I know that there's people in my community that can use it. So much food goes to waste in this country that is perfectly good to eat when it's being thrown out just because it's maybe not look marketable or they get a new shipment in at the grocery store. There's so many food subsidies in this country so farmers don't grow food when there's so many hungry people but it's just so they can keep the price of a certain commodity at an artificially inflated rate. If you're working on trying to teach people how to help themselves, that sort of thing, like, you know, that sort of one of the things I like about Food Not Bombs is the, uh, the emphasis on, like, learning how to do this sort of thing. So, you know, it's more empowering than just, you know, charity. The way that we do it is we'll start at 12.30 uh, every Saturday. We start um, cooking here at 560 Allen Street um, and everybody comes together to cook. Um, we cook for about two and a half hours. We cook, wash, prepare as much, uh, as much food as we can uh, to have, have out at our meal chairs at three o'clock. I mean, I just feel that I'm privileged enough to be able to have a kitchen and have a house that I can make food and share it with people and get an abundance of food from reclaiming it. I mean, what do you got? Uh, we got lots more peppers and we got some onions and whatever, basically whatever. You, how about some, uh, I don't know, how, how do you think yams are doing that? Uh, we're going to start making a couple different things. Uh, today we're going to have uh, basically like a grilled mushroom and onion sandwich available and we'll also have uh, pretty hearty soup. We do that pretty often. And then later on we'll be working on a fruit salad too. Uh, we serve only vegetarian food um, each week. We try and serve vegan as much as possible um, because vegan food is available for everybody to eat. There's no religion in the whole world that can eat vegan food. There's also very few people that can eat vegan food. We have a whole lot of folks that come through um, 
and it's really changed as the weeks have progressed. We started up in December, so it was mostly folks who would just be happening to pass by or had heard from other shelters that we were giving out free food. This is beautiful. The only thing we ask is that you don't waste it. No. And that is like great. Good. Thank you. They'll have to be washed, so you can take however many you want. Take a couple of things here. That's and anyone can come. Like, no one ever gets turned away. Like, we don't look at someone and say, you don't really need this, you know? Everybody needs it. It's healthy food. <laughs> well, see, the reason I'm asking is I'm wondering if I could eat it yeah. indoors. You can go in and bring, the plate bring back. it back. They yeah. got the facilities to wash it out. Like, people can afford to go to Burger King and get, like, food, but it's not nutrition. You know, everyone deserves a nutritious, healthy meal, and that's what we wanted to provide. We really try and keep money out of the system. Uh, as much as possible so things that we do we get for free uh, all these vegetables all the bread all the fruit it, we all got for free we all collected together and uh, then we bring it here and do what we can with it this is food no bombs campaign just feeding people that's a, that's a good thing man. Sharing, sharing food that's for a, free that's a beautiful thing man like no, I'm, I'm, I'm glad this is out here because there are a lot of people down on their luck for one reason or another and they, they deserve this, you know, they really deserve it and uh, I, wish, I wish we could get the government to support things like this because this is what makes society great when people give of themselves, give to each other and, and create a bond, you know, solidarity. Here, there's a fork and a bowl for you. And I'll a lot of people look at it as they're attracting homeless people. It's encouraging homelessness, you know, like people choose to live on the street and be hungry, which maybe that's true for a small percent, but I don't believe it is. I believe that has to do with certain social and racial conditions that exist in this country. Repression in the city is really not that bad. There's a whole lot of other communities that have their activists hassled a lot more often. Last year, uh, the sharing of food to large groups and other things similar to that was outlawed in Orlando. One day the city had decided that they'd had enough of people helping people and went in and arrested a couple of the folks from Food Not Bombs Orlando. Those folks have been in jail for over a year now and they've been working on a case ever since. You know, the, the, it's, it's not the whole, the revolution will come someday, it's, you know, the, the, this sort of thing Depending on how you how you, how you define it, this sort of thing is you know revolutionary work. We're teaching people. Heck, actually, food not bombs is uh, according to something I picked up and read a while ago. Apparently, food not bombs itself is being watched by uh, the FBI as one of the most dangerous domestic terrorist uh, organizations out there. And what do we do? We feed people. <laughs> yeah, seriously, and like. Yeah, it's that whole green scare everybody's talking about these days, you know, that the red scare in the 20s, and now it seems to be a green scare. I mean, I'd like to see Food Not Bombs just everywhere in Syracuse, like not just being like, oh, we have the Syracuse branch, that's that's it. It's like, where's the Westcott? Well, it's like, when's the Westcott Food Not Bombs going to meet? When's the north side Food Not Bombs going to meet? Where's the, like, further east side, whereas the, each park should have like a food not bombs going on a different day or the same day. I'll tell you what's right about the youth today is people like him. All right, he's my, my future son-in-law here and he's all right. <laughs> I'll do what I can. Next week, 12.30, we'll start cooking again uh, up at the Collective House on Allen Street. Um, we'll be cooking from 12.30 to 3, and I'll bring all the food down here and share it.